it is, I think, the most democratic source of energy ever the men ever made use of, because it's everywhere in the same measure. It is in Africa, as in America, as in Asia, as in Oceania, as in anywhere. Yeah, Un unlimited potential. The potential is unlimited, exactly. Imagine a world without gasoline or coal. No more pollution from burning fossil fuels. No more oil spills devastating our oceans and land. No more mining that scars the earth or utilizes unethical practices. A world where the air is clean, the skies are clear, and the natural environment remains beautiful. A future with unlimited clean energy for everyone. That is the promise of Zero Point Energy. This concept will revolutionize the way we think about energy, providing a limitless source that could power our world sustainably. Zero Point Energy is the energy that is everywhere, all around us, all the time, even in empty space, like a giant hidden battery. It's a sea of fluctuating energy fields that, when harnessed, will provide an inexhaustible power source for all of mankind. Imagine cities powered entirely by this clean, limitless energy and electric cars that never need to be recharged. This may sound like a dream for tomorrow, but it is here today. When we unlock the secrets of zero-point energy, we will pave the way for a new era of technological advancement and environmental sustainability. That's not only the promise of zero-point energy, but the promise of one man's lifetime mission to diffuse his breakthrough technology to the world. My name is Andrea Rossi. I have worked for all my life in the field of energy. I started to study the LENR in the wave of uh, the work of uh, Pauls and Fleischmann, trying to replicate the great effect. And then I have gone on with a series of uh, trial and error until we arrive to, to this last development that I think is important because now we have prototypes that make energy in an SSM mode where SSM means self-sustaining mode. This is a zero-point energy that, uh, that comes from a device that uh, reverses the difference of entropy. So instead of along the third principle of thermodynamic going into the increase of the disorder if uh, it force or energy is not in injected in the, in the system, we use this principle to put in order electrons in a way that the difference of it of entropy of electrons is reversed. This difference of entropy generates energy, that is the zero point energy, that is transferred to the electrons not in phase. I discovered that in effect it is the reverse difference of entropy that generates this energy. Speak English, Doc. We ain't scientists. It is a box. This box makes electricity. So it can be useful to make whatever uses electricity. You can make heat, you can make light, you can make uh, electric engines uh, uh, to, to run, as we made in the racetrack of Latina. Yeah, so I received an invitation from Andre Rossi. He was going to put on this um, demonstration in Latina, Italy. The purpose of the test was to show that an electric vehicle could be powered by an ECAT generator almost indefinitely. And they chose um, a Renault Twizy, which is a small micro car, which normally has a range of about 70 kilometers on one charge. And they put an ECAT on, on board this car and it kept the battery charged throughout a drive which lasted for 201 kilometers. And at the end of the test, the, the car started as a charge of around 62%. And at the end of the test, the battery charge was measured again. And it was, yeah, I can't remember the exact number. I think it was around about 82%. So it had actually not only kept the car running for uh, six plus hours, 
it had also increased the the charge of the battery during that time. So I thought that was a very impressive result, and um, I've, I've been a little bit surprised. Well, maybe not too much surprised, but it really hasn't taken received a lot of uh, attention. Uh, you know, it's fairly minimal attention. I think there's a there's a core group of people who've been kind of following the ECAT story over the years, and it's a you know, a few thousand people maybe really take it seriously. Steve Previch, uh, CEO of a private equity fund uh, that invests in cutting edge energy technologies and supports LENR type companies. Around 2010, after being on Wall Street for 20 years in emerging markets, I had found Henry Rossi's work um, and it started reading up on him way back. Persistent, you know, unusual experimental results that I had seen uh, and, and gained my long-term interest, obviously, up to this date. I've rigorously and I've researched his technology. I have worked with many other LNR companies, visited labs around the world. I've been, been to the conferences and I've spoken to people. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about, um, you know, his authenticity, his credibility in my perspective, and if anything, making the hard-earned effort and his journey to do a uh, a good thing for humanity. I think people just don't take it seriously because it is considered impossible. I don't think it is impossible. I think it's I think he's shown it's very possible. And uh, like I said, I think if it was adopted, if this was a technology that was adopted widely, which I think it should be, based on what it can do, uh, I I think it could really revolutionize the way the world works. You know, there are efforts in order to try by a lot of very strong people out there, um, strong, mentally strong people that want to see this for humanity's change for a better world. And right now, this rationing, this scarcity of energy for the last hundred years hasn't really done much for us, except cause a lot of problems. Energy for free. Vote, uh, uh would make uh, life easier for everybody in the world. Somebody would become an enemy of respect. But uh, in the world there are, I suppose, six billion people. I don't know if it is correct to make happy 100,000 people and make uh, worse life for six billion people because this is what is happening now. Yeah, sadly. Yes, very sadly. Imagine a world where you, anytime you turn on your TV set, you uh, hear only uh, good things, good and useful things, and no worse anywhere. I do believe that it will be for the better of the world and um, stop a lot of these, you know, skirmishing for land. I mean, if, if I may, I can tell you that the war in Iraq was strictly, you know, it was Greenspan, quote him. If you think this is about the Twin Towers, it's really about oil. You can pull a quote up there. He's, this is about oil. You know, that uh, that's what most wars are fought over. It's usually energy and oil and coal. And this will make that obsolete. I've spent quite a lot of time with Andre Rossi over the years. He just uh, visited him and talked to him quite a lot. And, I find him to be a very serious, very serious person, very committed. I've got a hundred percent confidence in that his technology works. Um, the bigger question in my mind has always been: Can he make this a commercial success? Uh, I think that's probably the bigger challenge for him now. Uh, I think it seems like he's perfected the technology to. Uh, from a technical point of view, but I think the business uh, world and the, you know, the surrounding social and political implications, I think that's a big challenge to deal with because obviously it, it, there'll be so many ramifications if it became, you know, a, a technology that was used widely because of the competing interests. So obviously you're not going to be too happy to see such a, uh, technology come along. So I don't know. That's that's the bigger challenge, I think, in my mind. Well, open source is, is a great idea for technology. Uh, but in certain circumstances, you do have to know that just like with AI and Sam Altman, would he hand this over to someone he believes that would misuse it? 
um, and take it, uh, militarize it. Uh, with Andrea Rossi, I, I get it. He wants to make sure it's not misused. And I also believe, you know, there's nothing wrong with the money drop. He needs money in the coffers. He's got to fight these people that will go after his patent. There's, there's literally 10,000 patents out there under LENR. And, you know, he wants to make sure that, you know, he's got that runway to get his technology out there, get the recognition he deserves. And then that way, you know, he can know, um, you know, his, his day of coming that he's done something uh, not just grandiose, but something of, for humanity. Uh, this is my mission, my professional mission. And uh, the realization of uh, this mission, which means this energy uh, diffused in the world, would give a meaning to my professional life. You look over history and you see, you know, there was the steam engine and I guess before the steam engine there was the water wheel and, you know, one type of energy source has gradually superseded others because of the it, because of its superior characteristics. And I think the ECAD has characteristics superior of any other source that I'm aware of. We've always been shackled to the grid. Um, we've always been, you know, rationed scarcity. Uh, and that rationing and the grid, I, of course, that's a great way for people to keep, you know, themselves in the and and the in that food line, money chain. And and at this time, decentralizing that energy, you have ease of access. You have the freedom to know that no one can, you know, knock off your electrical grid. No one can shut you out. Uh, and that will take us to uh, closer to a type one planet and launch us into a different paradigm altogether. This technology will be a benefit in the long run. It will fill a major scarcity. Desalinations, for one, heavily energy intensive. You can have them everywhere if you need to now. Heat in the uh, Arctic, gardens in the desert, recycling plants. Um, you know, those will, you know, which are also heavily energy intensive will make it worthwhile to recycle. Uh, and, you know, besides the carbon footprint um, that it will remove. You know, energy from free without pollution, because by the way, the reverse direction of, of entropy does not emit uh, any radiation, does not emit uh, pollution of any kind, does not pollute water, does not pollute air, does not pollute earth. Obviously, the climate change issue would be strongly helped by a form of energy that uh, does not modify the balance between CO2 and 2 oxygen and uh, water vapor in the atmosphere. If he stops getting a lot of attention, you obviously politicians are going to get involved. And when that happens, you know that anything can happen. I think what would really help him is if there was sort of a groundswell of popular support for it because politicians are responsive to popular opinion of course you know if he could get a, like a, a public groundswell of support and i think that would really give him a lot of um strength because like i said everybody would want this technology in my opinion or almost everybody would want this technology uh because of you know what it, how it could benefit their lives uh so i don't i think once people re recognize it as being real i th don't think people will be very happy if politicians somehow or regulators somehow buried it the potential is enormous because uh, uh, because this is a technology that can be applied everywhere uh, it can be applied everywhere and uh, uh, the, the source is uh, Unexpected, unextinguishable, cannot be extinguished because, you know, again, it is everywhere. The entropy is operating everywhere. It is in Africa, as in America, as in Asia, as in Oceania, as in anywhere. The potential is unlimited.